Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I want to say thank you. Lord, I want to say thank you. Oh, 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 Lord, I want to say thank you for all you've done for me. <laughs> Ain't God good? Lord, I want to say thank you. <laughs> oh, Lord, oh, Lord, Lord, I want to say thank you. Hey, Lord, I want to say thank you. For all you've done for me, 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 Lord, you've done for me, hey, for all you've done for me, you know, I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. But Lord, but Lord, but Lord, you told old death, you told death to behave. You touched my body. You woke me up again. And Lord, I just want to tell you thank you. For all you've done for me. So I just say, Lord, I want to say thank you. Come on, tell them thank you today. Lord, I want to say thank you. You've been so good to me, Lord. I want to say thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all you've done for me. For all you've done for me. Yeah. For all you've done for me. For all you've done for me, Jesus. Hey, for all you've done for me. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who shunned at my caution in my house? Won't you stand in your feet all over the room? Who shunned at my house? Who shut up our city on the Rosheti? Who that about caution in my house? You know, sometimes when we can't sleep at night. That psalm comes into my spirit. And I begin to just cry out to God. I said, Lord, what is it? Why am I restless? And sometimes God will wake me up and have me get in the word. And he'll speak one word. And I'll go back to sleep. See, God knows how to get our attention. When we try to ignore, ignore that still, small voice, when God is speaking to you, we try to ignore it because we don't want to hear it. But God will keep on tugging at your heart until you get up. It might be 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. He's going to keep on tugging at you until you get up because I need to speak to you. I need to make love to you. See, God makes love through his word to us. There is nothing strange. Because if you love God with an intimacy, God says, I make love to you 
through my word. And as God began to speak, God is speaking this morning. I'm shifting your life. I'm shifting your life. You've been comfortable. You've been struggling. You've been holding on to addictions and habits. You have secrets in your heart. But God says, I'm shifting your life today. I'm shifting your life today. I'm pulling out the strongholds. See, I, I've done almost a year series on strongholds on Facebook Live. And each lesson got more powerful and more intense because God was conveying a message to me. I don't know about you, anybody that heard the lessons, but he spoke specifically to me about strongholds in my life. That if you're going to be a man of God, and stand before my people declaring my word, you better come correct. You better come correct. God's speaking to somebody in this house today. You got to come to God correct. God says, I'm breaking the shackles off your mind. I'm breaking the strongholds off your heart. And I'm releasing the anointing over you today. I don't know if you can feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I'm, I'm so hot up here right now. God says the anointing is being released over your life right now. He said, I'm meeting you right where you are in that place. In that place where those struggles been. In that place where those habits been. In that place where those struggles got a hold of you. He's like, in that place. I'm stripping it out of your life. Because I want you to come correct before me. He said, I open up my heart before you to invite you to come into my house. Since when you come into my house, he said, there's room for everybody in my house. Doesn't matter what it is. And I found out that sometimes our rebellion will cause us to get sick. Our rebellion will cause us to get sick. And I asked God about this one day. I was in prayer. I said, Lord, why is this pain keep coming back? He said, because there was rebellion in your heart. So you try to ignore it. You try to overlook it. You try to preach over it. But he said, because of the struggle, I released the anointing over you. And I showed you grace. He said, my grace has carried you through the toughest time in your life. When the enemy thought he had you, I ordained you for such a time as this. I put my spirit in you for such a time as this. He said, because I want you to come correct. You got to come correct, people. God is shifting our lives today. Because he sees what we're going through. He said, I'm a God who's acquainted with your sorrows. I feel your hurts and pains. I feel your discontentment. I feel your heart when it's worrying and hurting and burning down. I feel it upon myself, but I'm releasing the anointing to lift up the yoke off your neck to destroy the burdens in your life. Because I love you. Because I love you. Because I love you. So all over the room, I want you to lift your hands. They okay over there. They okay. They doing the work of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the anointing in this place today. I thank you for the shepherd of this house 
who left me, oh God, an assignment to fulfill his duty for the church today. And I thank you, God, that I received a double portion of the anointing. But today, God, I lift up your people in the house today, God, who've been worrying, who've been struggling, who's been in pain and discontentment, who've been burning down with society, whose families are in trouble and in turmoil. Many lost their lives. Many are dealing with the pandemic. Some lost their the electricity in Texas, God. People froze to death, God. But yet, God, some still purpose in their heart to come into the house of God. And I ask God right now that the anointing will cover every person in this room even those on Facebook watching today, God, that you cover them right now, God, with your spirit. That you destroy the assignment of the enemy that has come to buffet them. To stop them in their track. And I thank you, Lord God, that the anointing is healing the brokenness. That the anointing it's lifting up a bow down head. That the anointing God is covering them as a blanket. And that every need, every need financially, spiritually, physically, mentally, that you would supply according to your word. We even pray now, God, for rededication. For those who have backslidden in their hearts, God, that you bring them to conviction right now to get back to the right standing and right relationship with you, God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray today, dear God, for souls to be saved. Those who don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that your spirit do the drawing today, God. That you draw them to a house somewhere to hear the gospel. Being on television, let them hear the gospel of salvation. Just like you told Zacchaeus, the tax collector when he was in a sycamore tree looking for Jesus because he heard he was passing by God do not pass us by but when you came to the place where he was you looked up and said Zacchaeus make haste and come down for the day I must abide in your house God, you brought salvation to his whole household. And I thank you, Lord God, that whoever have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church will receive this word today, God, that you have given me to speak to your people that will bring transformation of mind, body, soul, and spirit that our lives We'll line up with your word by the power of the Holy Spirit. I bind every demonic force, every assault, every assignment, every confusion. I bind it in Jesus' name and send it back to the pit of hell where it come from. And I thank you, God, that the chains are broken right now, that the burdens are lifted, yokes are destroyed because of the anointing. In Jesus' name, amen. Remain standing for the reading of the scripture. I'm going to read one scripture, but there's several scriptures I'm going to go through today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Sister Kim, Sister Kim, God heard you. God says he heard you, and he's shifting the atmosphere around you. So the enemy thought he was going to keep you bound in a spiritual prison. Just like Peter, when he was in jail, he had 17 soldiers guarding him. God says he sent angels, a legion of angels to surround you. That every time the enemy would try to come in against you to take you backwards, God says don't be hindered by your past anymore. But as I have brought you out, God says you move forward by faith in the purpose God brought you out for ministry upon your life. You have a calling on your life. The reason why the enemy attacks you so hard, God says he calls you to be an evangelist. And the enemy has been attacking that call upon your life to blind you from the truth. But God says he's stirring a hunger in your heart for the word of God. That your eyes will be open to be flooded with the light to know the hope and the measure of God's grace that's upon the calling on you. And God says, you're going to walk as a free woman from this day forward and not go back to the chains anymore. I don't do this too often. I really don't. But when God is moving like he's doing today, I must obey him. I must obey him. Oh, shut up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Sister T, God says he's healing you. He's healing you. So don't let your mind think he's not healing you. So a lot of times your illnesses is because of the way you think. But God says I'm shifting your thinking today by the power of the anointing. He says he's releasing a fire upon you. And that fire is an all-consuming fire. God says, I am that fire that's going to burn inside of you. And I'm going to draw out the sickness and the disease and cancer shall not return. Because God says, I healed you with my anointing fire. But you got to believe it by faith that it is so. And God says, when you walk Get into the word. Find you a scripture that you love the most. Begin to pray that scripture over yourself. God says when you open your mouth, he said the scripture that you love the most is going to begin to talk to you. The scripture you love the most is going to fill your heart with such a joy and excitement. And he says every time the enemy tries to put doubt in your mind, He said, that word is going to remind you that God has not forgot about you. That's what God says for you. As your husband stands next to you, God said the same fire is upon him. And the fire is going to burn in both of you. And that fire is going to heal both of you because you've both been afflicted. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. God says, I deliver you out of them all. Receive it by faith. Believe it by faith. Stand on it by faith. Do not doubt, but believe in thy heart. Whatsoever thing that thou sayest, it will surely come to pass. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hebrews 11th chapter verse 1. Hebrews 11th chapter, verse 1. Hallelujah. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped. With an E-D, it means something you thought about a while ago, that you hoped for a while ago. The evidence of things not seen. The evidence of things 
not seen. It said, for by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then in Genesis, Genesis. chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, in verse 1, says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, let there be firmness in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmness divided the waters and were and said they were under the infirmities from the waters which were above the firmness and it was so <clears throat> and God called the firmness heaven and the evening and morning were the second day and God said let the waters under the heavens be gathered together unto one place and let the dry lands appear and it was so and God called the dry land earth and then gathered together the waters he called the he seas and God saw that it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herbs yielding seeds and fruit trees yielding fruit after its kind whose seed in it in itself upon the earth. And it was so seed after its kind. And it says, and the trees yielding fruit in, in whose seed was in itself and after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and morning were the third day. And God said, let light um, be there uh, it said, and God said, let there be light in the firmaments in the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them bring, be a sign. And he said, for a season and for a day and years. And let them um, be for light in the firmaments in the heavens and give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule by day and the lesser light to rule by night, made the stars also. And God set them in the firmness of the heavens and give light unto the earth. He talking about the stars. And, and said to rule over the day and over the night. And he divided the lights from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and morning was the fourth day. And God said that the waters bring forth abundantly and moving creatures that has life and fowls and that may fly above the earth and open firmness of the heaven. Then he went on. He said, then God created the great wells and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, every winged fowl of, of his kind, God saw it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let the fowls multiply the earth. And the evening and morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures after its kind, cattle and creeping things, and the beasts of the earth and after its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth after its kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the earth and the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every cattle and over over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created so God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him, male and female, he create, created them. 
and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful uh, and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over everything, living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, behold, I have g given you every herb and er bearing seed which is upon the face of the, all the yield, it says, upon all the earth and every tree in which the uh, fruit tr of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat. And the beast, it says, every beast of the earth and every fowl of the air and everything that creeps upon the earth and wherein there is life. And I have given every green herb for meat and it was so. And, and God saw everything that he had made and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. And the reason why I read all these different scriptures beginning in Genesis is because my subject today is unshakable faith. Unshakable faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, it starts out saying, now faith is the suffering of things that you already hope for. You look, read the scripture, it's something past tense. It's not talking about something present. It's something you've already been thinking about, something you've been praying about, and you've been trusting God to do in your life. And God said, it's something you hope for. Then he says, it's a sub the substance of things not seen, the evidence of things not seen. So the evidence of things not seen means it has not appeared yet what you hope for, but you still believe in God. He's going to bring it to pass in your life. So God says, so then it says, and the worlds were framed, boy, how? By faith. So God created the heaven and the earth. Everything I just listed here from Genesis chapter 1, verse, verse 1 through uh, 31, is everything that God originated and he put into action by the act of faith. If God did not believe in himself and, and when he began to speak something to existence, it would have never came to be. So when God says he's going to put the earth, he's going to put the water, he's going to put the creatures, he's going to put man and woman. And, and, and then when he talks about creating male and female, he hadn't even created, created the woman yet. The woman didn't come into existence until chapter 2. So when God spoke this thing into existence, he said, by faith, all these things shall be. So God said, and it was good and very good. So God said, in six days, I created everything that you see in life today. He said, because I am a self-existing God, I'm Jehovah Shammah. My presence is everywhere at the same time. I can speak a word in your life and change your destiny. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. But the problem comes in. In order to have unshakable faith you got to know what faith really is faith is something that operates by your intellect but it, pro, pro, it produces within the heart when God spoke these things he had to think about it follow me now when God spoke these things, he had to know with an assurance what he was going to produce in the earth. So when God said, now faith is the substance, he talking about having a strong, unshakable belief in that God's ability to do what you've been praying for. Some people have been praying 20 years for God to deliver them in certain areas in their life, and it never happens because you have shakable faith. When God gives us a word to stir us up, to change our thinking, there's apprehension. There's resistance. There's rebellion. There's stubbornness. There's idolatry. There's witchcraft. There's the spirit of the Antichrist. And the God said in his word, and he spoke to Timothy, Paul spoke to Timothy. Timothy he said, man, he said, you know what? There are many Antichrists in the world. He said, many of them in the world. He said, the Antichrist was coming, but he's already here. He said, there, and there are many followers that follow after his teaching. So you don't know the word for yourself. An Antichrist can come along and tell you something that sounds like God, but it, it defiles God's word, and it leads you astray. It leads you from your conviction of your salvation and dependent on God. So God says, 
that we got to know without a shadow of a doubt that my belief is stern, is rooted, is grounded in the Lord. So if anyone come preaching any other gospel, Jesus said, they're not of me. He said, those who follow me will keep my commandments, not only keep my commandments, but they're going to love one another as I have loved them. And the problem comes in, we don't love one another because we don't love ourselves. I'm not going to be long. I'm not going to be long. I'm just doing what God told me to do. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says we walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. A lot of folk in the house of God been going out of tradition to church. Your traditions, Jesus had a problem with folk in their tradition. He said, your traditions, it negates and it nullifies the power of God because you're stuck in your tradition. And the God is trying to shake us up today to break your cycle of tradition. I have a tradition of going to church because my mama went to church. I got a tradition of going to church because my daddy went to church. I got a tradition of going to church because my grandparents went to church. And so I don't go for myself. I go because they went to church. Tradition. Your religious belief will stop you from walking in truth and righteousness. God don't want you to be religious. He wants you to be a child of God. Walking in truth and righteousness. That's why in John 14 and 6, he said, I am the way. We walk by faith, not by sight. Why? Because I am the way and the truth and the life. I cannot walk by faith if I'm walking by sight. See, a lot of times your vision would trick you up. You can have blurred vision. I take my glasses off. I can see some. See, a person look like something else because I can't see without my glasses. A lot of folk in the house of God can't see without their spiritual glasses. God is talking today. You got to get into position where you begin to get in the word of God and get the word inside of you and the word begin to marinate in your heart and stir you up in your faith to believe hope against hope that when God spoke in his word, I'm going to stand there without a shower of doubt. Nobody going to turn my faith. I remember an old scholar named Smith Wiggleworth. This man was a plumber, but yet he found Jesus. And when he found Jesus, he started going around healing folk. Sometimes he punched people because God told him to punch them. And, and when he punched this one man, he said, why you hit me? He said, because God told me that your healing's in the punch. A lot of times God does things that doesn't seem normal. He'll do things that's abnormal because he's trying to get your attention. We get distracted by everything around us. And God says, I'm trying to turn your vision back to me. A lot of folk have double vision in the house of God. You can't see. You can't see God if he stood before you because you're blinded by yourself. Your selfish ways gets in the ways of God and it makes you do things that God doesn't want you to do and you don't care about it. How can a child of God be on Facebook glorifying their sin? Come on, think about it. You're supposed to be a representation of Christ but you get around unsaved folk and you let them have that spirit that's in them get inside of you to lure you into a bait of Satan to begin to magnify your sin. That's shakable faith. Because you don't have no true faith. True faith would tell you that if I'm out of order with God, God's word tell me the just shall live by faith. So if I'm the just 
That means I've been acquitted. I've been forgiven of all my sins. I've been made right with God. So if God said the just shall live by faith, guess what happens? It doesn't matter what folks say about me. That's the old man. I'm a new creature in Christ. A friend of mine was preaching last Sunday, and I heard his message. He was talking about how people want to associate you with your nickname. That's from the old nature. You read in the Bible, God changed Abram to Abraham. Because he said, by faith, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. He said, because I'm going to change your name because your name is going to represent what I'm doing in your life. I'm going to call you the father of multitudes. He changed Jacob's name. Because Jacob wrestled with God and Jacob was a trickster. Jacob saw Esau birthright. Because he was a trickster. And God says, guess what's going to happen? Because you prevailed with God and you didn't give up, you kept on. God struck him in the side, made him limp. But when he began to limp, God says, I, he said, I'm not going to let you go, God, till you bless me. How many times do God have to put a limp on us in order us to hold on? God does things in our lives and let the enemy afflict you in certain ways to get you to hold on. But because of your faith is shakable, you look at the problem, you glorify it. You look at the situation, you magnify it. The Bible says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. So that means we got to come into agreement to magnify God above our problems. So because he wrestled with God, God said, you prevail. I'm going to change your name to Israel because you wrestled with God and you prevail. We got to get to the place without playing church and know with personal conviction. Check this one out. James chapter 1 verse 6. It says, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth it's like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Shakeable faith. When you come to God and you're trusting God to do a thing in your life, you got to know within your heart that God's going to do it. You cannot allow the enemy to put you in a place where you negate God's word. Say, God, word ain't going to work for me. Uh -uh. You know, I tried that already. God don't care about me. God, God, he see what I'm going through. You know what my children are experiencing. God don't care about me. But God says, by faith, you're going to have whatsoever you say. Jesus starts out, Mark 11, chapter verse 22, and Jesus said to his disciples, what? Have faith in God. So there's an indication that the foundation of your faith is not resting on the wisdom of man or in yourself, but is resting in God. So when God says that, then he says, he said, but him that asks in faith, nothing wavering. Why? Because when you waver, you're doubting. When you're wavering, you're not sure of what you're asking God for. You got to know what you're asking God for because you better be careful what you ask for. You just might get it. So he says here, for he that wavereth, that means, I, I remember years ago when the prophetic movement, the charismatic movement was going on, and they would have great evangelists come to the city from other, other states, even other countries. Folk would flock to those different places where they were to hear a word. Girl, come over here. Man, come over here. Because they got a prophetic word over there. They're going to speak a word. You go to that church because this, this is a great revival going on. And you only the word, you go there. So folk run over there. Oh, there's another one over on that side of the country, on uh, the town. Go you, let's go to this church on tomorrow night because they're going to have a word over there too for us. So you run over there. So you're running everywhere seeking a word. But you ain't seeking God. You're seeking everybody else for what they got, but you're not seeking God. And he said, that person... He said, like the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Why? You would go down to the lakefront, <clears throat> and you see how the, the wind, when it's strong on a certain days, it began to draw that, begin to push that water. The water began to just 
just waves. A lot of waves begin to bounce up and down in that water, right? That's how your faith is. He's talking about you got got shakable faith. It ain't grounded. So if your faith ain't grounded in God, amen, baby. (laughs) If your faith ain't grounded in God, God says, you ain't going to get nothing from him. He's a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. So you you be double-minded, that means you can't make your decision. Uh, I was reading just the other day, Elijah, he was speaking to King Ahab, and he said to him, he said, Oh, King Ahab came to him and said, Elijah, are you one that's stirring up trouble in Israel? He said, am I the only true prophet in Israel? So he knew what he was. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? And so he began to ask a question. Why halt ye between two opinions? You know what that means? Two decisions. You know what God said. But your flesh said, no, we ain't going to do it. And God says, well, if you walk by faith and not by sight, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to open the windows of heaven and begin to fill your house. Your flesh said, no, that ain't possible for me because everybody else seems to get blessed. I don't never get blessed because it's like every time I try to call on God for something, he don't never do it for me because he, he takes his time for me. Like, God don't care about me. He ain't listening to me. We do it all the time. We talk ourselves out of the promise that God has for us. So God said, so, so, so Elijah said, why halt ye between two opinions? He said, if God be the God of Israel, then serve him. But if God be the God of Baal, then you worship him. So in other words, you need to know who you serving. Make up your mind today that from this day forward, I'm going to serve the true and living God. I don't care what folks say to me. I don't care what's going on around me. I'm going to stand on God's word and allow the word of God to lead and guide me into pastures green. One more scripture, and I'm almost done. John 11:40. Jesus said unto her, Said not I unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou shouldst see the glory of God. God promises that if we believe in the words that Jesus speak to us, we will see the glory of God. It's a guarantee because God promises in his word. Mark chapter 9, verse 23, and Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's a guarantee. That's a sure word of prophecy that's spoken in God's word for you today. You got to believe without a shadow of a doubt and have your own personal conviction that regardless of what people say, I'm going to keep on standing on God's word. And then James 1 and 3 says, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh, is working to produce to manufacture patience. You need patience today? The trying of your faith is manufacturing patience in you according to the word of God. But you got to know within yourself that when trouble comes, don't get a bad attitude because things are not happening the way you want it to happen. Don't get a bad attitude because Folk talking about you behind your back and you heard about it. Don't get a bad attitude because things ain't going the way you want it to go. It's like every time I try to try to get blessed and try to do what God tells me to do, it's like I keep losing out. God says every promise for his people is yes and amen. Yes and amen. Won't you stand with me? Every promise that God has for you today is yes and amen. You must have in your daily walk a stern personal conviction that regardless of what happens around you, on the inside, I'm going to have an unshakable faith. I'm going to stand on the promises, the prophetic word that God spoke to me. I'm going to keep on trusting God with all my heart, my soul, my mind, my strength. I'm going to love with every fiber of my being. And God promises 
that everything he has spoken to you, it will come to pass in your life in this season. But you got to believe it. You got to trust God at his word. You got to thank God at his word for what he spoke to you and believe God at his word that it's going to happen to me. I'm a millionaire. You tell yourself, I'm a millionaire. You have a millionaire mentality. Because God changed your thinking to begin to see millionaire mentality. So whatever it is you're trusting God to do today, it might be healing. It might be comfort through the loss of a loved one. It might be pain in your body. God says today is the day of salvation. Salvation is an all-inclusive word that includes everything you're going through. Because he is the savior of the world. And because he's the savior, he says, why are you yet crying out? I have heard you. That business that seemed to be struggling, the business that you're looking to start, it doesn't matter what it is. Get your mind on that one particular thing that God spoke to you to do. And we're going to pray and we're going to dismiss. But I want you to get your mind on that one particular thing that you're trusting and believing God to do in your, that you've been hoping for for a very long time. And I want you to believe in your heart and do not doubt that what you're asking God for, that he would do it. Somebody need an increase, financial increase. God says he's going to do it. Somebody needs healing. God says he's going to do it. Somebody needs deliverance. God says he's going to do it. No matter what it is, he says, I'm going to do it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this word today, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, for your presence reminding us that he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Even in your shadow, it benefits. And God, I thank you today that as we're resting in your presence right now, God, those particular things that your people are believing you for, God, I come in faith, decreeing and declaring it shall happen in this season. I come against the spirit of apprehension, the spirit of doubt, fear, and unbelief. I break the shackles of failure. I break the chains of bondage over our minds that we would have a clear conscience, free of sin, to believe that hope against hope, that what you promise, that you're able to perform it. And I thank you, Lord God, that somebody is being healed right now, God. Healed in their faith, oh God. Healed in their mentality. Healed in their bodies. Healed in their hearts. They're being healed in their conversation right now, God, because the anointing is flowing in the atmosphere. And I thank you, Lord God, that your word that goeth forth from your mouth will not come back empty, but it will prosper where until you sent it. It shall do that which you please because you're God all by yourself. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to open the door to the church. You don't have a church home at this time before we go. If anyone need to give their life to the Lord, salvation, you need salvation. You don't know Jesus, your Lord and Savior. At this time, I extend the invitation to you. Don't leave this place without getting to know Jesus. Because it's not guaranteed when you leave this place, you're going to live. But God has an assurance that if something did happen to you, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. We find that there is none. So, Lord, we thank you. 
for your presence, O oh God, for the word that going forth today, O oh God, that will not return to your void. But I thank you, Lord God, that the word will begin to penetrate in our hearts and our minds, O oh God, to remind us over and over to have unshakable faith. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide in us from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. You dismiss.